Hello everyone and welcome to day three of Mary Maxim week. Now today <laughs> we have a little bit of a different type of project. We are making an apron. It's a very simple apron. The idea for this apron is to just keep your clothes a little bit cleaner and to give you extra pockets in case you're needing some tools or your phone even to go in the pockets. Now the reason that this came about is I was researching trying to figure out what we wanted to make tutorials for for the channel. I was trying to make something that is like kind of gender neutral and so I was like okay apron. I saw an apron in a magazine I was like I can make an apron. We can do an apron and then I started thinking like when I do the dishes my stomach is always getting wet from leaning over the sink from like <laughs> being extra tall from having a stomach like my stomach is always my shirt is always wet after I do the dishes so I was like okay if I had an apron on I could kind of prevent some of the water from seeping into my shirt right and then I was thinking okay but I also love gardening and so wouldn't it be cool to have like a little apron to wear where I could carry my pruning shears or my little hand shovel or like my phone on me because sometimes I don't have pockets you know and so that was the whole idea behind this very cute apron and I did it in kind of a gender neutral color so the yarn that we used for this is Mary Maxim baby blankie yarn and this is a basic acrylic it's 100% acrylic it's 695 yards um, this is a little this is the most expensive yarn that we're featuring this week but it's $12.99 a ball but you get almost 700 yards so i made the apron i made a matching what did, oh a ma matching little do rag for myself and i still had enough to make something else with this so it doesn't take a whole lot to make it doesn't take a whole lot of yardage to make the apron you can of course make it as big as you want it to be I do tell you how to make it so that it's wide enough to fit around the front of your body because some of us have wider bodies and some of us need more like width <laughs> okay so this is completely customizable you can make it as wide or as narrow as you want it you can make it as long or as short as you want it to cover whatever part of your body you need it to cover very simple tutorial doesn't take a whole lot to make this a lot of fun and I show you how to make the pockets and I to show you how to attach the pockets and I made a nice little string to go on here. Now, you can make the string as long as you want. You can make it long enough to just tie in the back, which is what it fits on my body. It just ties in the back. Or you can make it long enough to wrap around the front as well. And tie in the front if that's easier for you. And these pockets are so handy. Because you put your phone in there. You put your tools in there. My pin is open. Don't want to put an open pin in there. You can put like your like oh, deodorant because that's what we have on there. <laughs> My body spray. Like you can fill the pockets with the tools and stuff you need for the project that you're doing. If you want to put your rubber gloves in there because you're cleaning the bathroom or whatever. It's good for all of that. This yarn. Even though it says baby blanket, it, there's enough in here to make a baby blanket. There's more than enough to make the apron and a do-rag and some more. <laughs> now this colorway is the color, I think it's Leap Pad, Leap Frog, Leap, what's it called? Lily Pad. <laughs> it's Lily Pad and it's a nice neutral color. It looks far more blue on the internet than what it actually is in person. So there's blues in here, but they're kind of like slate blues with a grayish color and yellow. And so it's beautiful, neutral colorway. I am also going to tag in the description box below. I am going to tag the tutorial for this matching hair kerchief or do-rag. There's a tutorial here on the channel. The reason being is because like a lot of times when you're like working and doing your chores and stuff, sometimes you just want your hair off your face. And this works perfect for all of that but also it's really cute so and it goes really cute with the apron <laughs> and it was an easy tutorial so when i got done i was like i got enough of this yarn left over to make some more stuff so i decided i was going to make a matching thing because how cute do the two of those things look together it just goes like you look fabulous like i said this is totally a gender neutral type thing actually all of these can be worn by anybody i don't care <laughs> okay you do you 
But for me, like, I was like, I wanted to make something that, that everybody could appreciate. No matter who or what you you are. So the baby blanket. This yarn, not real. It's not the softest acrylic. Um, I didn't have problems working with it at all, but it's not the softest acrylic. But it's a good sturdy acrylic, which is why it's perfect for stuff like this. And also, like, it makes good baby blankets. And I'm sure that it washes up softer. It says machine washable and dryable, which is fantastic for cleaning things because it's going to get dirty. It's meant to get dirty. And the fact that it's machine washable and dryable is fantastic. This is a worsted weight number four, and it makes beautiful stripey patterns, which is why I liked it. This comes in five different colors, and they're baby blanket colors. But they don't have to be. Like Why, why are we limiting ourselves so we can't wear baby blue? Because it's a bait. No, I'm going to wear that because it's cute. <laughs> or this one. This is so cute. Like, I fell in love with this. And I almost made the pockets yellow. So if you wanted to make alternating colors, like if you wanted to pick one of the colors out of the ball and just make, like, yellow pockets or blue pockets that go with this to offset it, you can totally do that with your scrap balls. I totally approve of that. So... <laughs> This is a lot of fun. This is one of those things is like, why are you making us wear an apron? We don't like housework. We don't, I don't want to do the chores. I don't want to have to change my outfit to do the chores. Okay, well, that's why you need an apron, okay? Because <laughs> we all got to clean. We all got to do the, the chores. We all got to clean the toilet and the, the, <laughs> the dishes and all that stuff that we hate doing. We might as well have something fun to wear that's going to protect our clothes, that's going to provide us with extra pockets to make our lives easier, you know. And this yarn was a lot of fun to play with. And for what I say, it's $12.99 a ball. You get a full apron, a do-rag, and then I can make something else with this as well. Like, there's enough here to make a hat. There's enough here to make, like, maybe a cowl. I don't know if there's enough here for a cowl, but, like, there's a lot here still. If I hadn't made the do-rag, I probably could have made two aprons out of one ball of this. So, definitely worth the money. Definitely, you get your value out of this yarn. <clears throat> so, coming up next is the tutorial for the apron. If you want to make the matching kerchief or do-rag as well, I will link that in the description box below. If you want to purchase any of the yarns we're featuring on Mary Maxim Week this week, those affiliate links are in the video description box below as well. And those just help the channel out when you click those and you make purchases. But I thought this was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed making this apron. And if you make this apron for yourself or for your loved one, I had one of my subscribers say she was making it for her husband for when he's gardening so he can keep his little tools in there. And I was like, that's going to be so cute. So if you're making this for your husband, I want a picture of it. <laughs> I want to see. And uh, I also add in the... Um, in the video I talk about ways that you can add like if you wanted to add a ruffle to the bottom of the apron to make it a little more um, cutesy you can add a ruffle to the bottom I show you how to do that as well so in all of these tutorials I try to give you guys ways to customize it so that you can make it your own by changing the pocket color by adding a ruffle at the bottom if you want by adding a little cute do rag if you want and I tried to do that with all the tutorials so that we have options to personalize and make them uniquely ours. So I hope that you enjoy the tutorial that's coming up next. All right, so to get started on the apron, we are using one ball of the Mary Maxim Baby Blanket. And this one is the color Lily Pad. It's just really pretty. So like all of my patterns, even though this is not technically a wearable, like all of my patterns, I like to make them adjustable because we don't all have the same body shape or size or whatever. So we're going to kind of measure this apron off of our body because we both, we all know, just between you and I, <laughs> we all know sometimes um, if you buy like a store-bought apron, it doesn't always fit across a bigger body. And because I have a bigger body... I don't buy store-bought aprons. I make them myself. I have sewn aprons, and this is going to be my first crochet apron, but we're going to put pockets in the front because I think it'll be a lot of fun. So this is going to be real simple. There's not going to be multiples of anything. We're just going to do a real simple like rectangle square, depending on what you want. We're just going to chain until it reaches across the part of our body that we want it to cover. 
Now if you want it just in the front, cool. I want mine to kind of wrap around the sides a little bit too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain a length and I'm going to wrap it around the part of my body I want it to lie around. Now if you figure, I don't have an hourglass figure, but if you figure the hourglass figure, I am not putting mine across where my belly button goes. Mine is going to go up higher um, just under my rib cage because my stomach always gets wet when I do the dishes and I really would like to prevent that. So the part that gets wet is up higher above my belly button. So I'm going to make this actually go around where my, the top of my stomach is where my rib cage meets my stomach area. So I'm just chaining until we get to that part to where it can reach the width across my body I want it to be. Okay, so this is going to be your apron. It is going to be made to fit your body. And this is just going to be a little, you probably already saw it because I showed you in the intro. <laughs> but since we haven't made it yet, I haven't seen what it looks like. So <laughs> I'm trying to explain to you in my head what I imagine this to look like. I want it to be like a a waiter style, like, you know, the kinds that the waiters and waitresses wear where they have the pockets in the front for their pens and the checks and all the good stuff. That's what I want it to look like. All right. So that to me looks like a good length for how I want it to fit on my stomach. Where is my tape measure? I should stop putting the tape measures on the opposite side of the desk where I can't reach. I would really like to have a tape measure built into this table. That would be fantastic. I might have to do that. Mod Podge one. All right, so the length of my chain is 28 inches. I'm gonna add a couple more stitches. We're gonna go for 30. One, two, three, four, five, six. That looks like about 30. All right, so I 30 inches. I have a big wide body. The biggest part of my body is my stomach. So, I went for 30 inches. You can go for whatever number you want it to be to fit your body. And we're just going to create a, sca a, a scale, yeah. We're going to create a square or a rectangle. So, if you want it to just be a square and just fit over just the stomach part of your body, that's cool. You can make it a little bit longer, make it a rectangle. But it will be a rectangle from top to bottom, not wide. Okay. So... I'm going to do double crochets because they work up a little bit faster. You can do singles if you want. If you do single crochets for this, you'll get tighter stitch. Oh, by the way, I'm using a 5 millimeter hook. Um, if you use single crochets for this, you will get a little bit better detail in the patterning of this. But I'm making an apron, so like it doesn't matter <laughs> to me. But if you use single crochets instead of double crochets, which you totally can, just every row. We're just, we're making a rectangle. You guys know how to do that. I think that the hard part, the tutorial part of this is going to be when we do the pockets. Because other than that, you guys can all, you guys all have the ability to make a square or a rectangle. That's all we're doing. The benefit of using single crochets over double crochets, because single crochets will take longer, but you absolutely can do that. The, there's patterning in this this is going to pattern. It's going to stripe and it's going to give you pretty detail. Um, it will look better in single crochet, I believe. Um, but, like, it's not going to look bad in double crochet. It's just going to, there might be harder breaks. So the color might, like, right here be this color. And then there might be, like, a darker color or a lighter color here. And it will break the color. And it will be more visible and obvious if you use double crochets. But double crochets go faster and it's an apron like we're not making a sweater we're not making a garment we're making an apron and it can be double crochets so that's why we're doing double crochets but again you can do half doubles if you want you can do any stitch you want for this we're just making a square and this this ball of yarn should very easily make us an apron with yarn left over the reason I picked this yarn is because I really like the patterning in it and I thought it would be a really cute apron. And you could do this apron in cotton as well. Um, cotton's a little bit heavy, like, and especially if cotton gets wet, it gets heavy. And I didn't want that, so that's why I used acrylic. 
because acrylic doesn't tend to absorb water into its fibers as much as cotton does. And also, another podcaster that I'm friends with, she said she makes her washcloths out of acrylic because they tend to not stink as quickly as cotton washcloths. And that blew my mind a little bit. I was like, what? <laughs> Did you know if you've ever used a washcloth or a dishcloth in the sink, in the kitchen sink, it will get an odor like really fast. See how the color's getting ready to break? Watch. See how it goes from, it shifts colors like really fast. Well, maybe you can't see. It's a little bit on the bright side, but to avoid that, use single crochets. That don't bother me, though. That has never bothered me, but I know some people are like, ew, no. <laughs> so, we're just double crocheting, and we're just going to double crochet until it meets the length that we want our apron to be. For me, I'm going from my rib cage down to about mid-thigh, so I don't know how many inches that's going to be, but it's going to be kind of on the long side. And I'm going to put pockets in it. And my idea is for my apron is to keep my stomach from getting wet while I'm doing the dishes. But also, I wouldn't. I want to use my apron in the garden. Same reason. My stomach tends to get dirty in the garden. Like, I'll, I'll, it collects dirt if I'm baking or something. First place anything goes is on my tummy. And so that's what this apron is trying to do. That, But I'm putting pockets in it because I also want it to help carry. Like, if I'm going out to work in the garden... I want it to carry my pruning shears or scissors because sometimes you use scissors out there or like whatever my small tools are that I might need out in the garden. I'm going to use, that's why we're putting pockets on here. But the pockets will be like a last, one of the last things we do. We're going to create this rectangle and then we are going to create a tie to go around it to tie, you know, to tie the apron around your waist. And then we're going to create pockets. And this is the easiest part. I mean, it's all easy. <laughs> it's all easy, but this is the easiest part because you're measuring it how wide you want it on your own body. And you're just, you're going to create a square or a rectangle for the size you want your apron to be. And I will give you my measurements as we go along. So like I said, my chain was 30 inches. And we're going by measurements, not by stitches. Because we're not doing a fancy stitch. So we don't need to keep track. There's not a multiple of anything. It's just 30 inches. If you have a hard time um, making a rectangle or a square, because your ends tend to go in or out, which I have that problem sometimes, if you have a hard time with stitch recognition, every couple of rows count your stitches and make sure that you have the same amount of stitches to make sure that your your rows aren't going in or out. So that you actually have a tri not a triangle, we're not going for a triangle, a rectangle or a square at the end of this. Because the area most people have a problem with to where their, their rows grow is that last stitch. It's hard to tell where the last stitch is sometimes. I really like the color of this yarn. I think this is going to be the cutest little apron ever. And also, if you're done with your, when you get done with this apron, if you want, you can make little appliques or get like patches or something from uh, the Dollar Tree and put those on. Don't iron them on though because this is acrylic and it will melt. <laughs> if you want to sew little patches on or make little appliques, like that would be so cute. Because this is called lily pad and the colors, I'm thinking how cute would this be with a little frog on here? Or put little hearts on the pockets. Or stars or anything like that. Alright, so I'm going to chain two and I'm going to turn we're just going to keep on double crocheting. But see how we started the row in this, I don't even know what color this is, this greeny bluey color. And then it 
quick shifted to a different color like if that bothers you do this in single crochet and you will not see those breaks as harshly um but for me it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me at all so we're just going to keep doing this is a one row repeat we're going to do double crochet so i chain two we turned we're going to skip the first stitch and double crochet in the next this is going to be the same row over and over and over again until it's the length that you want so for me, I'm probably going to go for 35 inch length because I don't want it to be square. I want it to be rectangle. And then I will measure it at 35 inches and see if that is, you know, that that's what I want. I might, I might do rectangle or square. I don't know. Oh, there's a little bit of yellow. That's so pretty. A little poppy yellow. This is going to be such a pretty little apron. All right, so repeat this until you get the length that you want. And I will meet you back. Okay, so we are back. And I did not make this as long as I thought I was going to make it. I thought I wanted it rectangle down the front of my body. But now that I have it on and I'm seeing what it looks like. Now, remember, we chained a width of 30. And the... The length from stomach to below the stomach, I got about 16 inches, and I know that this is going to stretch out a little bit with wear, so I think 16 inches is good. Isn't this beautiful the way it's working up? I love these colors. All right, so we're back because we're going to work on the straps next. Now, these straps are going to be entirely up to you how you want to make these. Um, you can do them long enough to tie at your back but me I'm going to make them long enough to tie around the back and back in the front because it's just easier for me to get them around my back and tie them in the front so these are going to be like really long really long straps so to make the straps actually I got a little bit of curly on the bottom you see that <laughs> so to get rid of the curling I'm actually going to detach from the bottom or from the, this is the, yeah, that's where I just ended it. I'm going to tie off here. And this is going to be actually the bottom of my apron. Because this is laying much flatter and it's not curling. Well, it's curling a little bit now. I cut it off. But it's laying a lot flatter. Whereas this part wants to curl because I chained too tight apparently. So what I'm going to do is the part where I chained, I'm going to actually attach the straps there. And it will, it will help it to not want to curl on the ends. So, I'm just going to attach, reattach the yarn down here where the chains are. And I am going to chain a long, a long chain, long enough that I know that it will wrap around my, and as a matter of fact, let me stand up. Because if I could measure around that part of my body where it's going to lie, whoop. All right. So I need it I'm gonna say it's not quite 60 inches but I'm gonna need 60 so minus the 30 inches that we just that we have here to wrap around I'm gonna say 30 inch straps I think I think that will work so I think on either side, I'm going to just chain another 30 inches. And this strap is going to be very, a simple strap. I don't want it real thick so that when I tie it, it holds, but I don't want it too thin that it's not strong enough to hold the garment. So I'm just chaining off the side here and I'm going to chain or I'm going to double crochet back this way and attach it here. And see if that's a good thickness I think it will be a good actually yeah I think that will be a good a good thickness so I'm just chaining the same width what I want to do is triple the width of the apron and so whatever your starting chain was for me it was 30 I'm gonna double that on both sides so I'm gonna do 
30 on the front chain, 30 to start the garment. Then we're gonna do 30 inches for either strap. And then we're gonna double crochet back and attach it to the corner there. And we don't even have to measure. We can just hold it back across. Oh, we're almost there. <laughs> don't even have to measure. A couple more. All right, we're at about 30. A little bit longer than 30 because it's better to have extra length than it to be too short and not wrap around your body, right? So we're just going to go... And you can do doubles. I think I'm going to do half doubles. Half doubles seem to be more um, stable, more sturdy, more structurally sound than double crochets in, in my mind. So I'm just going to half double crochet. And if you want it thicker than this half double crochet, you can make two rows of half double crochet. Or three rows. You can make this as thick as you want it. I'm just doing it kind of thin. Because I, I feel like the thicker the strap, the less secure the knot will be when you tie it around your waist when you're wearing it and as with all of my tutorials I kind of have an idea in my head of what I want and then we just go for it we just go for it we design as we go along we figure out what we're doing as we're going along so so I sometimes will change our mind halfway through a tutorial. Like I really thought this was going to be much longer and I held it up to my daughter's waist and I was like, okay, this is a really cute length and I like it. I, th I think it'll be cute. I was also debating whether or not I want to add a ruffle to the bottom. So we're thinking about that. I will show you how to do the ruffle regardless if you want to add a ruffle on the bottom. As it is now, it's just going to be a rectangle shape. But if you want it to have a little ruff on the bottom, you can make a little ruffle. And these colors are totally unisex. So, like, this could be for a dude. This could be for a chick. Like, whoever wants to wear this can wear it. So I'm just doing half double crochets back up the length of that. Not a lot of stretch in here. Now I'm thinking about it. That might not be long enough. <laughs> we may have needed to make these straps longer, but it'll be fine. Even if I have to tie it in the back, it'll be fine. I was actually kind of surprised by my measurements right there. If you guys are new here, you don't realize that I just dropped 40 pounds. And uh, my measurement was a lot smaller than it was recently. So it kind of surprised me. And my tutorials always have me talking in them. So we always talk about whatever's on my mind so that we crochet together. It feels more community like when when we get to have some conversations while we're crocheting together. You know, I don't like the starchy, you know, instructional type tutorials. I like I like the feeling of us crocheting together. That sense of community. That's why I do my tutorials this way. So welcome to my life. I really like this yarn. In the ball the yarn doesn't feel real soft um like it's not it's not scratchy but it doesn't feel real soft and i have skin issues as you can tell by my finger right there my skin is very sensitive to chemicals to um textures to certain fabrics i can't i can't touch paper products like paper bags or construction paper like I have, <laughs> I have a lot of skin issues and, and also um, sensory issues in regards to the skin problems that I have. 
and I have not had an issue using this yarn at all. And that says a lot. That says a lot because I do, I have lots of skin issues. And I've really enjoyed working with this yarn. And I'm really loving the colors as they're coming up. It's very all over the place. And I was also thinking, another option for you guys, if you want to do, because we're doing pockets on here, okay? If you want to do pockets in a scrap ball of yarn to add little pops of colors, like, that would be so cute, right? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, well, how cute would it be to have little yellow pockets on here? So... I'm going to show you guys how to do the pockets, but if you have a scrap ball of yarn somewhere to make the pockets in a color that is coordinating, or, I mean, if you want to make the pockets totally opposite of what they are, I still think that would be really awesome. I'm having a lot of fun with this apron. Like, when I first thought, oh, let's do an apron, I was like, I don't know if anybody's going to like the apron. But, I figured it's something that everyone, man, female, woman, child, it doesn't matter. You guys can all make an apron for yourself and wear them because they're not just a woman thing. I mean, if you add the ruffle, that's a tad more feminine, but I'm not going to judge you if you're a guy and you want to wear a ruffle. Like, I'm not going to judge nothing like that. But um, I figured this is something anybody can use, and it's useful. Like, especially if you don't want to get wet doing the dishes or, like, soaked. I mean, you still might get wet, but, like, soaked doing the dishes or if you need something to carry in your to help you carry stuff for gardening like that's really what I was thinking I was like this would be so cute for gardening and I do have I have a couple of fabric aprons in there but this I this just it's like a gardening apron to me. That's the way I see it. We're back to the edge. And I'm going to leave it at this thickness because I like it at this thickness. Make sure that I turn this. Because we chained off that first. We want to. This is the, the top of the apron. I want to chain. I want to connect it down here on the side. So I'm just turning it a little bit. I have to weave in those ends later. And actually, I'm going to connect this twice. I'm going to connect it at the bottom. And then, oh, let me show you how I did that. Okay. Wrap your yarn like you're going to do a half double crochet, but instead of going into the strap here, go into the fabric of the, the apron. Pull up a loop and pull through the first two, okay? And then go up to either the next stitch or the stitch after that. This will give it a little more, um, better connection. And then just pull through all of those like that. And that way it's connected at three points here so that it's not, it's a little bit, got a little bit more strength to it. And if you want, you can go up and do another row to make this a little bit thicker, but I really like the thickness of this. So I'm going to leave it here, but I'm going to leave a long tail. And the reason I'm going to do a long tail is when I sew this together, when I weave in my ends, I'm going to actually put a little bit more reinforcement by sewing this back and forth over these stitches. So, I'm going to need a bigger, I'm going to need a bigger needle than that. That'll do. I'll show you just repeat this whatever you did with the strap however you made your strap repeat it on the other side all right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just make sure I'm going in and out both of those just to add a little extra strength just in that and then out see the blue is the the half double crochet there so make sure you connect it to both the apron and the strap and just sew it extra just to give it a little extra strength because we don't want it like snapping at that point 
Just weave it in and out, in and out. There is no right way or wrong way to do this. We're just trying to reinforce it as best we can. And I'm going to weave it in and out, in and around these straps here. See how it just closes that off a little bit? And then we'll do the same underneath where we just sewed. And there's no right place or wrong place to put your yarn. You just want it to be, see, that gives it extra strength. You see how we did that? And then of course we can come in later and weave those ends in, but that just gives us a little extra strength for the strap. Okay. And then we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing, but you don't need to see me repeat that twice. You just want to chain so that it's the same length as this strap and do whatever stitch. If you did a half double, if you did a couple rows of single, or if you did double crochet on this, just repeat it on the other side. And I will be back in a little bit and we will design the pockets. Okay, so got the straps on so now it's time to build the pockets so to build the pockets because we want because we're going to be carrying things in our pockets most likely so what we want to do is build the pockets to have a little more strength a little more um, stiffness to the fabric so we're gonna do the pockets actually in single crochet so we'll start with a slip knot and I think the pockets I want them big enough for my hand to fit inside so let's see The widest part of my hand will say a six inch pocket maybe one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty is just over five so 25 to 30. Yeah, 25 is 7 inches, so that'll work. So chain 25 and then just do single crochets. And then we are going to do single crochets every row. So that's kind of a, a, a denser fabric, a little bit of a sturdier fabric. A little bit of a stronger fabric that's not going to stretch out as much. So do single crochets every row until you get the depth of the pocket that you want. Uh, I want kind of deep pockets, so I'm thinking like maybe 8 inches. Because I want them to be able to carry like gardening tools. And I think 8 inches would probably work really good so that the gardening tools will sit in the pockets and not like fall out. Of course, if you're not using this for gardening, you don't have to put pockets. Uh, or you could put pockets to carry whatever you plan on keeping in your pockets. Some tissues maybe, or like a little bit of money if you're going to, you know, run to the store real quick. <laughs> okay. Chain one and turn. It's trying to curl on me. Yeah, that seems like it's a good size pocket. And like I said, you could use this yarn for pockets because we have a lot left over. I didn't realize how much we would have left over. I'm just doing single crochet back, back and forth, back and forth for eight, eight inches about. Get a nice deep pocket. And um, I didn't realize how much yarn we were going to have left over. So because of that, I may make myself a little hair kerchief thing to match my apron because I think that would be super cute. I do have a tutorial for that on this channel as well, so it's called the Cinnamon Stitches Hair Kerchief or Do-Rag, because that's what my daddy always called it was a do-rag. He put on a rag to cover his hairdo, <laughs> which is ironic because he was bald, but you know. So Yeah, I thought that would be such a cute little matching hair kerchief do-rag thing. 
to go on your hair, match your aprons for when you're cleaning or gardening or whatever. So that's a bonus tutorial if you want to make a matching hair kerchief. I will try to remember to link that below. If not, just search Cinnamon Stitches Hair Kerchief or Hair Do or Do Rag. Cinnamon Stitches Do Rag. If I forget. And this will change the striping a little bit of the design, the color design, because we're making smaller stitches, so the, the color will stripe a little bit differently. All right, you guys don't need to see me crochet single crochets back and forth for eight inches, so I will be back at the end of this pocket. And you're just gonna make two of these. And then I will come back and I will show you the pocket when it's done. And then show you what the next step is before we attach the pocket to the front of the apron. And we'll talk about placement where you might want to have your pockets at. I will meet you at the end of this pocket. Alright, so the pocket is about the size that I want. What I am going to do is I am going to run a single crochet around the entire perimeter of this. Well, not the top, not the top of the pocket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a single crochet along the three sides. We got curling because I crocheted really tight because I wanted a dense, a dense fabric. But since we're sewing this down to the apron, it's not gonna matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I detach the yarn, I'm gonna reattach it where the top of the pocket is. So I kinda want the yellow towards the top just cause that's, I think it's pretty up there. So I'm gonna attach up at the top with a single crochet. And I'm just gonna run single crochets all along the side just to have some place that's easy to easily definable. And I'm crocheting over my end right here cause you know, I don't wanna look at it. This will give me an, an easy place to see my stitches, to use those to sew this onto the apron. So I'm just going to put single crochets around three sides. My hook is squeaking. Mr. Cinnamon is home, I will be right back. All right, so I continued to crochet while I was talking to Mr. Cinnamon when he came home from work. I'm almost around to the top Again, so I made it around all three corners. You're going to want to create two pockets, one for each hand, or I mean, if you only have one hand, you can just put one pocket. <laughs> so, two pockets is what I'm doing. I'm going to try to create them the same as each other. I want a long piece of yarn because we're going to be sewing this in. I'm going to tie this off. Okay. Get my yarn in there. Then we're going to lay the apron out. You can actually do this by putting it on your body as well. I'm just going to eyeball it because I'm not that picky with where my pockets are going to be. I just don't want them off to the side too much. So here's our edge. I'm figuring about, about a hand's width away from the edge. About five inches away from the edge of mine. And you can pin this down if you want. You can use yarn needles to do it. I just happen to have these on standby. You can do anything to pin these down. You can use um, stitch markers, progress keepers, whatever you want. You want it kind of, you want to make sure, line up the stripes with each other. That'll give you your guide to make sure that it's even. And I'm just pinning it there. And you can move this. Get it to where you want it. So my pockets are gonna kinda be, 
I know you're not up very far, but my pockets are going to be kind of close to each other in the front. So I'm going to give five inches on either on the edges to where my pockets are going to be. And then I'm going to thread my needle. And you sew this on however you want. There are no sewing rules. There are no sewing rules. Okay. Use the single crochets as a guide to where you want to put your stitches. And yes, this happens when you have too much yarn. <laughs> My yarn perhaps might be a little too long. All right. Oh, we got our first stitch in. And then just run in the stitches like this. Make sure you're getting that back layer in there. Zoom you in so you guys can really, really see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going in one single crochet down in the back of the material and coming up the very next one. And just pull it through. I'm just going to do that. It's just a running stitch. All the way along. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I lost one of my ends. There we are. <laughs> there we go. You're just going to do this all the way along the edge. Down this side, up this side, and up this side. Leave this part open because that's your pocket. If you do all four sides, which I've been known to do that, you're not going to have a pocket. You're just going to have a square. <laughs> it's going to be an applique. And do that the best you can. You want to make sure you have enough stitches in there that it is secured on there nice and tight. And do it all the way around. That's how you just adhere your pocket. Is you just go in the single crochets. Oops! I banged the camera. I'm not even. I, I'm not even on screen. <laughs> you just go in and out. This is a lot easier to do on a table, just because it keeps everything like flat and where it's supposed to be. So if you have room on a table somewhere to do this, it just makes it a little bit easier to grab all the stitches. Although do whatever feels right to you. If it feels better to do it in your hands, then do that. I'm just gonna sew this pocket on. I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the other side pocket. And then your apron is gonna be done. When I get done sewing this in though, I'm gonna show you how to do ruffle on the bottom of this if you want. I don't know if I'm going to actually keep the ruffle, but I'm going to show you guys how to create a ruffle on the bottom of your apron if you want. You can also add um, ruffle or like shell stitches or something along the top to give you a little extra detail if you wanted. And you can use, like I said, coordinating colors. You can use coordinating yarn. Like if you have scraps of any of the colors you chose. Take my needle out. See, and that's nice and secure. If you have any of these colored yarns, you can just create a pocket from that. Pay extra attention to your corners and make sure that they are nice and secure. And this, the bottom as well, make sure that's extra secure. Just because that's where the weight of whatever you're putting in your pocket is going to be on the bottom of your pocket. So you want extra extra stitches if you can or at least like see how I came out here if you go back a stitch and go to the next stitch over that gives you like a a little bit extra strength in your stitches because you're double stitching the stitches like that at least on the bottom where it's nice and uh you need the extra strength need the extra reinforcement and just keep making sure you're getting all the layers that you're getting the pocket layer and the apron layer 
because I've also done that before where I'm sewing along and I thought, oh, I got all the layers and then I look and there's like a whole layer and I'm like, wait a minute, I missed a part. And I'm sewing my hair in. So do this, repeat the second pocket. I will meet you when I'm done with this pocket and I will show you how to add ruffle to the bottom if that's what you guys want to do. Okay, you don't, you don't have to add ruffle to the bottom. If you like the straight edge, leave it like that. But I'm going to give you options to, you know, make this a little bit more your design. Some, you know, little extras. I like to add extras. All right, I'll be right back. I should have probably also told you to reinforce the top corners of your pockets as well. Put extra stitches in there because those are, that is the one part that also gets uh, the most wear and tear on a pocket is because you're pulling here. So there's a lot of pulling there. So make sure you put a couple extra stitches there as well. So there we have this, this cute little pocket. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's big enough for my whole hand and it's big enough for my phone. <laughs> big enough for some scissors. Big enough for like my tools. If I had more tools here, I'll just throw some tools in there. So, pocket's cute. All right, I'm gonna leave that and weave that in. Whoops, come on. What the heck? I don't know how I did that. Knotted itself. All right, so now we are going to, I'm gonna show you how to do a ruffle on the bottom. I don't think that I'm gonna do a ruffle on the bottom of mine. I'm not just I just don't think I'm going to but I will show you guys how to do a ruffle and then I'll probably frog mine back out what did I do with my there it is there it is I found it all right this is the bottom corner and the idea to make a ruffle is just to add more stitches than what you need so in order to do that I'm gonna do like a shell border but we're gonna make it roughly. So I just attached that with a slip knot. I'm gonna chain one and I'm going to attach it with a single crochet. I'm gonna skip one and in the next stitch after that, I'm gonna put six double crochet. Two, three, four, five, six. Skip one, put a single crochet. Okay. And so it will give you little shells at the bottom, but the shells have more stitches than what is necessary. So it will give you like the more you go, the more of a ruffle you will get. So skip one and then the second one, put six double crochets, two, three, four, five, six. Skip one, single crochet, and do that all the way across. Skip one, six double crochets. If you want a bigger ruffle to where it curls more, put more single or more double crochets in there. Instead of six, put seven or eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip one, single. Skip one, six double. Two, three, four, five, six. And again, you can do this in a coordinating color. You can do it in white to give it that cute, because what it's going to do is it's going to curl like that. <laughs> Isn't that a cute little detail? No, I don't want that on mine because it's just not the idea I was having, the, the look I was going for, but that's an alternative for you guys. And um, like I said, you can do the pockets in a coordinating color or like a, a different color altogether if that's the look you want. You can do the ruffle in a coordinating color or whatever to match the pockets if you want. The apron is up to you for you to decide. And we have a lot left over. We have a lot more left over. Well, I have almost a half a ball left. So I can make another whole apron if I wanted, which is a pretty darn good value to me. I may stuff to make the secondary pocket, but yeah, I had a lot of fun making this. It's cute. 
I really like the yarn print. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you make any of the tutorials for Mary Maxim Week, uh, I would love to see your details or designs. The best way for me to see them is probably the Facebook group, which is, it's free to join. Um, you can post it in the Facebook group, but you can also um, tag me in Instagram. If you have an Instagram account, just use the at sign cinnamon stitches, all one word, and it will tag me and let me see it. Or you can do hashtag, hashtag which is the pound sign, uh, cinnamon stitches, all one word. So it would be all one word, hashtag cinnamon stitches, all one, no spaces in there. And I will also see that because I follow that hashtag on Instagram. And uh, you can also email me. And my email is in the description box of every single one of these videos. And I definitely want to see which color of the baby blankie you used, how you did the pockets, did you include ruffles on it? Because you can do the same ruffle at the top of the pocket and it'll be really cute. Um... So yeah, show me what you guys did, please. I would love to see what you're doing. And thank you for joining me in this wonderful Mary Maxim week. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.